If you don't know about it, Little Nas X and MSCHF, that's the company that does the distribution, created and released a Nike Air Max 97S shoe dedicated to Satan with a pentagram that has is a, a drop sermon. of human blood in it that will be released this week. Now, first off, oh, there's only a limited edition, which they cost a thousand something dollars. They only have 666 pairs. Cool. But it's human blood. That's a sacrifice. People don't understand the spiritual transaction that takes place in that. <clears throat> the spiritual transaction that takes place in a drop of human blood in a pair of modified Nike sneakers. Of all the social ills that plague us humans in this fallen world, I would have to say that a satanically themed shoe promoted by a 22-year-old rapper called Lil Nas X, who, by the way, I've never heard of until now, is very low on the list. Hello, Bezel T3. That was Paula White, who we looked at last Wednesday, getting her Palm Sunday Hosanna on in a video I did uh, on her back in 2010. Today, we will look at the current edition of her Palm Sunday service at her new and improved church, now called City of Destiny in Apopka, uh, Florida, just outside of Orlando. I say her church instead of Christ's church because things that she says and also the ease in which she flaunts her physical affection for her former rock star husband, Jonathan Cain, during the service. Amen. Well, welcome to the greatest church this side of heaven. It's so good to have everybody in the house of God. Yeah. Give somebody a COVID hug. Uh -huh. You know that? Uh -huh. Like this. Thank you, baby. I get to give him a kiss. This is my husband, John. <laughs> I mean, there's nothing wrong with smooching your spouse, but just, but maybe, just maybe uh, on a stage leading a supposedly God-centered worship service is not the time or the place to be macking your man. Now, let's get back to this drop of blood, satanically inspired shoe. And here's the problem. We are so apathetic as Christians. You know, I'm like, Nike makes a statement and goes, well, it's not really us. It's another company doing it. Really, Nike? Now, we are so apathetic as Christians at times. There, there's definitely some truth to that. Really, Nike? But it has nothing to do with being all balled up, you know, all up in arms about some 20-something rap artist hawking a satanic shoe that he got an idea for. Actually, Nike was not at all pleased with little Nas X and his people doing this modification of their shoes. The shoes, which are modified Nikes, sparked a trademark infringement lawsuit from the sneaker giant. Nike has asked Mischief to permanently stop fulfilling orders of the unauthorized shoe. You see, <laughs> now, in, in terms of what Paula thinks is right, not only should Nike be outraged, but according to her, all Christians everywhere should be outraged as Because I well. remember, I remember when Steph Curry wanted to put Philippians 3, thir was it 13? When he wanted to put Philippians 3 on a shoe with you, Nike, and he had a contract. But you wouldn't let a scripture go on a shoe, so he decided to take less money and go with armor, where did he go? Armor, Under Armour, whatever it is. What do you go with, babe? <laughs> what do you go with, babe? <laughs> Paula talks like she's in a competition with her husband on the Food Network or something. What do you go with, babe? Now, it's actually Philippians 413. And on that shoe that she just mentioned, it's just the numbers 413 on the front of the tongue. I think I have a picture of it. Let's see. Um, yeah, there it is. 413 on the front of of the tongue. The words, I can do all things, is sheepishly uh, stitched to the back side of the tongue. Now that's fine, whatever. But it's interesting to note that little Nas X's Satan shoe with the drop of blood in it, take a look at this, uh, also has a verse on it. It's the verse from Luke 10, 18, in which Jesus is saying, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven which is meaning in the context of that passage that the proclamation of the kingdom of God by Jesus' disciples is bringing defeat 
to Satan and his kingdom. Now, I bring this up, uh, this shoe competition, you might say, because it's all so ridiculous. I mean, this little rapper sold a blood shoe. This little rapper, Rock Aware. This little rapper sold Golf Wang. This little rapper sold none. And this little rapper went Yeezy, Yeezy, Yeezy all the way home. <laughs> Big whoop. Shoes do not bring into the gospel, nor shut people out from the gospel. It is people whose shoe-clad feet bring the good news. As it's written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the good news. That diatribe uh, about the Satan shoe came in about 20 minutes into the message. So how did Paula begin this Palm Sunday sermon? As we enter in Holy Week right now, I normally would do a climactic sermon that would land in what? Hosanna, right? Yeah, she'll a get the Hosanna. prophetic phrase. Save now. Deliver now. We'd all walk away with a real high of everything and bring John's piano down just a tiny bit because it's a lot in my ear there. Uh, it's a lot in everybody's ear, Paula. But when you have the former keyboard player for the 70s rock band Journey as your husband, well, you might as well get the biggest bang for your buck. So let him noodle on the organ whenever he feels like it. Now, Paula begins quoting some stats about the lukewarmness of the church, such as... And only 19% of those that attend church have a biblical worldview. So 43% of evangelicals believe that Jesus sent... Jesus didn't have an affair with Mary Magdalene. True. Less than 61% who attend church of evangelicals read their Bible on a daily basis. So first off, we've got to start with this is the infallible the word of God. It is Bible. truth. It is an errant. Vicki, no matter what the large you have in this world, you've got to know, Missy, that this is the word of God. Okay, the Bible is the infallible Word of God, no question about it, and it is the pastor's job to proclaim the truth of the Bible. But that's not what's happening when you're going off about some rapper's latest shoe or other social ills. And by the way, who's Vicky and Missy? I, I, I don't know who that is. So when we see this, society is really just a reflection of the church. Okay, that statement reeks of New Apostolic Reformation Dominion Theology. Paula is saying, it seems, that if the church was really spirit-filled and infiltrating every area of society, you know, the seven mountain mandate kind of thing, then the whole world would be Christian. If the church was doing its job, there would be no Satan shoes, or pornography, or inner city crime, or transgender kids, or women lusting for eternal youth by turning to facial plastic surgery and, and breast excuse me, implants. Paula will now go into some detail about the Passover and the importance of the blood. And it was the blood of the Passover lamb because it's the blood that rescues you, because it's the blood of Jesus that has covered you. It's the blood that keeps you. It's the blood that covers you. Come on, if you could put on spiritual glasses right now, you're covered by the blood. Old school, we say, I plead the blood. Come on, I plead the blood over my house. I plead the blood over my children. I plead the blood over my car. Just before, I took my third communion today. Third communion. I literally, I'm always taking communion. I'll take my fourth, because why? I, I, I understand the power of the blood. It's not just a knowledge of the blood. It's an application of the blood. It's a receiving of the blood. Mm -hmm. okay. Okay, now, to be fair, Paula intersperses some solid biblical and gospel truths as she talks about the power of the blood of Christ. But this Passover body and blood language is all leading up to something. And you guessed it, it's the problem of the Satan shoes. And what's the church going to do about little Nas? Probably absolutely nothing. But if the church ever rose up, if the church ever used their voice, if the church ever used their power, if the church ever used their money, money. if the church ever used their influence, if the church just stood up with the resurrection of Jesus Christ and said, you are not going to put 666 shoes on feet. And the problem is the satanic church, the church of Satan, which was turned by Anton Levine. You, you guys know this stuff. Well, if we didn't know about Anton Levine, we do now. And protesting 666 pairs of modified Nike shoes, is that how the church is to rise up and use their power and money and influence? I don't think so. 
In fact, the whole idea of the church as a center for moral, uh, for, for social moral reform, it's off base. You know, Charles Finney, the Christian heretic of the Second Great Awakening, who flat out denied original sin, substitutionary atonement, and justification by grace alone through faith alone, was also a post-millennialist. He believed that the church was to bring in the kingdom of God on earth, and only then could Christ return. Finney's flawed view of sanctification taught that perfect obedience to Christ was attainable. <laughs> it's not. Finney's idea of cleaning up the ills of society by the efforts of these perfected saints would, in time, usher in the return of Christ and his millennial reign. Now, if all this sounds familiar, it is. It's called the New Apostolic Reformation. So let's now fast forward to Paula's Hosanna-infused Palm Sunday, 2021. The crowd can't wait to see what happens when he rides in Jerusalem. They think to themselves, the Messiah will judge the ungodly. No more oppression, no more government harassment. No more raising our taxes. No more high gas prices. Gas prices? I lower myself. I humble myself under the mighty hand of a sovereign God. Hosanna! Please rescue now. Okay, that's what you call a humbly hollering a Hosanna. But hold on. She is just clearing the pipes. You're coming back again. You're coming back. You're coming Okay, and that's called overmodulation. <laughs> now, to be sure, Christ is coming back. I believe that with all my heart. But will his church be glorious when he returns? Well, if you take a look at the seven churches in Revelation chapter 3 as a picture of the church of Christ throughout the time between his first and second comings, glorious is not the word I would use. Persecuted, poor, lukewarm, persevering, and partly apostate, yes, but glorious, no. Now, what happens next is very strange. Hosanna, get up here and sing it, please. And this is your benediction, we'll do communion. In fact, get your communion, can I have my communion? <laughs> can I have my communion? Communion, or the Lord's Supper, is a covenantal meal between the Lord and his people. What Christians receive are the common elements of the bread and the cup, which are signs and seals of the forgiveness of sin and union with Christ and other believers that comes from the one-time sacrifice of Jesus' death on the cross. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Come on. Come on, baby. Everybody say, come on. Take up the bread. Thank you for your body, Lord. Man. Take up his blood. It's tragic. You see, there's no fencing of the table to keep unbelievers from partaking. No prayer of consecration of the elements to set them apart for a sacred purpose and no words of institution of the Lord when he gave the first uh, Lord's Supper. It's all, it's all quite bizarre. Why? You'll get to it by Great Friday. Don't miss it. And by next Easter. Great Friday and next Easter? <laughs> Is that like a first right amendment? How can you do that to me when I live in a nation that gives me my first right amendment and I can speak on anything I want? I'm sorry, that was mean, but I did it anyways. Let's, uh, let's keep going. Which, by the way, for our children, we've got pony rides, and we've got a petting farm, we've got family photos, bring people, we've got it all. It'll all be happening. But the greatest thing, I do that just because I want the kids to have fun. It's after service, by the way. I want us to fellowship. It's not during service. 
Okay, no pony rides or petting farm during the service, okay? Does she really have to say that? I mean, that's, that's a red flag right there. And she says, I do it, and I want us to fellowship. Paula sounds like uh, she's the Pope of City of Destiny Church. Newsflash, Paula, any Christian church is Christ's church. Oh, and did I forget to mention that before this meandering Palm Sunday, theologically confused, political, moralistic sermon, there was, of course, the offertory. Now, let's see just how many ways Paula has fabricated for you to easily give to her ministry. Um, the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 3, we're going to honor God with this tithe and your offering. And it says in Proverbs chapter 3, honor the Lord with thy substance. Okay, uh, text PWM. Does that stand for Paula White Ministries or Pastor Wants Money? And with the first fruits of all your increase. So the first tenth of our gross income belongs to God. That's his tithe. And then there's offering. Uh, then there's other, so there's tithe, that's 10% right off the bat, and then there's offering, okay? Um, okay, so that one said tithe. text COD. Now, offering. does that stand for City of Destiny or collect on delivery? Offering actually was, uh, there were m multiple different offerings, peace offering, an oblation, burnt offering. There were all different kinds of offerings in the Old Testament. Okay, you can give by phone by calling Paula personally. It's talking about divine appointments. And so Deuteronomy 16, 16 says, do not stand before me empty handed. Okay, you can go to Paula's website. And that was the three fee seasons of the year. I have deep convictions personally. Okay, you can also go to Paula's COD, that's Collect on Delivery Church website. There's nothing we could ever do to buy it, to deserve it, to earn it, but we can honor it. Okay, and you can send it, well, if you have to, send it snail mail. What year to give to him. Tithe is pretty simple. If you make $10, a dollar belongs to the Lord. Amen. If you make $100, $10 belongs to the Lord. And finally, you can use Paula's cash apps. I wonder if she takes Dogecoin. Uh, seven different ways to send money to Paula. Now, don't misunderstand me. City of Destiny is involved in many different ministries, giving time and money locally and worldwide. But the glaring problem remains. At COD, it's all about PWM.